question. How can the last two female rhinos on Earth save their species from extinction? A. Cloning B. Mating with other animals C. Evolving D. They can't Yes, this looks like the most logical answer, but it's far more... In April 2013, several masked men robbed the National Museum of Ireland. They attacked the guards and escaped with the hall. Not with works of art or jewelry, but four rhino heads. More precisely, their horns. What kind of weird robbery is that? Why would anyone steal horns if they are more valuable things in the museum? Oh, you have no idea what kind of money we're talking about? To understand this, let's go to the African continent. Female northern white rhinos, Najin and Fatu, used to have many siblings who lived in several countries in East and Central Africa. But after the waves of poaching in 1970 and 2003, two of them were the only ones left. I mean, literally, only two of them. There are no more northern white rhinos on the planet. No wonder the last of their kind are now protected better than the head of any state. No, seriously, armed guards protect the rhinos 24-7, ready to repel an attack at any moment. The only thing missing is an armored vehicle and air support. Hold on. Okay, team, follow my command. I don't know if the female rhinos realize they're the last of their kind on Earth, but it seems like they got used to the guards. To be honest, I wouldn't be comfortable being so close to people with guns. On the other hand, sometimes it seems to be the only chance to save endangered species. To fight poaching in South Africa, there's even something like a rapid response squad. It includes veterans with real combat skills who do everything they can to help the animals. And you definitely not want to mess with them. Up. Unfortunately, there are times when machine guns, experience in flashpoints, training and awareness raising are useless. The last male northern white rhino called Sudan died in 2018, despite all the attempts to prolong his life. The reason was old age. There's simply no cure for it. Sudan was 45 years old. Wait a minute. This means there are only two female rhinos from the entire subspecies left on the planet? Maybe there's something I don't understand about mating, but I always thought that, well, that it takes a male. How can this be any different? It turns out it can. There's a type of sexual reproduction when female cells develop on their own. It's called parthenogenesis, and you can find it not only in somewhat simple animals like lizards or termites. In 2017, a zebra shark named Leone laid several eggs from which three baby sharks hatched. But at that time, the female had no contact with males for more than three years, and this was the first recorded case of parthenogenesis in sharks. While Leone was still in contact with males at some point, an 11-year-old reticulated python, Thelma, has never made it. Imagine your cat, which never left the apartment, would suddenly give birth to kittens. You'd be just as surprised as the scientists. Thelma gave birth to six small female snakes and DNA tests show she is the only parent. Moreover, it's still not clear why the snake suddenly decided to reproduce on her own. I guess she decided no one would help her with that anyway. Unfortunately, this trick will not work with rhinos. Mammals do not reproduce through parthenogenesis, even if they really want to. So how are scientists going to restore the endangered subspecies? Najin and Fatu also cannot bear babies due to a disorder. At this stage, you could probably give up and focus on endangered animals that can still be saved, if not for science. Yes, there are no males of northern white rhinos left in the wild anymore, but scientists have preserved their genetic material. And then everything is, well, relatively simple. Genetic material from males plus material from remaining females, in vitro fertilization, embryo creation, storing them in liquid nitrogen and surrogates, boom, we get baby rhinos. Future northern white rhinos are expected to be born with the help of southern rhino species. Well, we're not there just yet, but by April 2021, nine embryos had been created. And then I thought, just how many species disappeared during the existence of mankind? If we figured out how to save them earlier, everything would be completely different. Maybe the dodos would not go extinct, and mammoths would be roaming the earth again. Though, when did people first start thinking about nature conservation anyway? For a long time, our ancestors did not care at all about what was happening around them. They could always die from hunger, cold, disease, and predators. Don't forget cataclysms, wars. In such conditions, one could hardly think of sparing this particular deer just because there were few of them left. You either killed and ate it, or spared it and died. It's that simple. Though it seems the first time they thought about nature conservation was in 1662. 
Back then, the English writer John Evelyn presented his book, Silva, where he described the importance of forest conservation, limiting deforestation, restoring lost trees. Well, same ideas as today. The first law on the protection of animals was adopted even before that, in 1635, though it concerned domestic animals and banned various actions no one would even think of doing today. Things like plowing by the tail of a horse and plucking wool from sheep instead of shearing. What? <laughs> Though for humanity, this was already a big step forward. It's a shame we started preserving endangered species when it was too late. Since science today is much cooler than it used to be, say the 17th century, maybe we can really do something about it. Can we bring back species that have already disappeared? In theory, we can. In 2003, scientists even managed to bring the Iberian ibex, which had become extinct three years earlier, to life for 10 minutes. The cub died shortly after birth due to a lung defect, but this does not mean that all experiments will end the same way. Cloning has become much less risky today, and it might even be possible to bring back to life, I don't know, mammoths? Or the furry ancestors of modern rhinos? All you need to do is restore the ancient DNA. <laughs> Must be a piece of cake. Must be? Even if scientists could do this, the ancient animal would not feel very comfortable in the modern world. The extinction of the woolly rhinos was probably caused by climate change, and today you can hardly call it suitable for them, and even if the woolly rhinoceros somehow adapt, they will probably become a target for poachers. Do you think no one will dare take the horn of a unique animal if you place it in a restricted area? If only. Poachers once got into the French Thory Zoo to cut off a horn from a rhino and security failed to stop them. The animal was killed. It's all for the money. Remember the robbery of the museum in Ireland I mentioned at the beginning? Those four rhino heads are worth $650,000 on the black market. Sometimes prices reach up to $65,000 per two pounds, and this is just a gigantic amount of money. For comparison, ivory costs approximately $2,300 per two pounds. It's used to make talismans, souvenir figurines, and decorative items, but rhino horns are a different story. In some countries, a rhino horn is considered a status symbol and a cure for all diseases. Of course, the horn of a wild rhino is believed to be more effective, and clients do not care that animals die because of this. Are horns really that useful? Well, yes, for rhinos. That's why they grow on their heads. But there is still a way to save these animals, to remove the horns of the rhinos under anesthesia. This is always a hard decision to make. Perhaps you cannot call it humane, but for now, this is the only way to protect animals from poachers. It's also a bit reassuring that scientists know exactly how to remove the horn without consequences so that the rhinos can live for many more years. An encounter with horn hunters means certain death for the animal. And now I'll say a rather weird thing, but sometimes rhinos are better off without horns. That's not my opinion, just statistics. Half of the black male rhinos and about a third of the females are killed when they fight each other, and not because they're pushing too hard, it's a hard process. But some animals are literally dying out because of their own horns. Moreover, rhinos are not the first species to suffer from this. 7,700 years ago, Irish elk disappeared from the face of the earth. These animals looked like deer, but with giant, I'm not kidding, enormous antlers spanning 12 feet and weighing 88 pounds. The elk itself stood at six and a half feet tall, so it could handle such colossal weight, at least for a while, until evolution intervened. More forests appeared on earth, and it was simply impossible to walk into them with antlers that huge. Well, if you've always wondered how Thranduil's elk could move around Mirkwood without getting stuck in branches, obviously it was really hard. Perhaps this is why Legolas preferred horses. All the elk were already extinct by the time the War of the Ring began. But how do we know if we need to save endangered species at all? Well, some scientists believe we should mind our own business. Mass extinctions periodically wipe out up to 95% of all species in one go. They happen every 50 to 100 million years, and we're now in the middle of the sixth such extinction. Yes, it was caused by people above all, that is, it seems like it was our fault, but another extinction was triggered by a meteor. Do you think nature planned it all along? Any meddling with ongoing processes can end badly. Even biodiversity can be dangerous. Take, for example, microbes that cause fatal diseases. They're also part of nature, so everything turned out to be surprisingly complicated. 
Of course, you need to take care of animals and endangered species, but you don't have to constantly feel guilty. And it certainly wouldn't hurt to plan your actions in advance, or will it be like in China in the 1950s and 60s? Back then, the country decided to eliminate the sparrows because they ate too much grain. Of course, people won this fight, until it turned out that the birds were destroying pests like locusts. The insects multiplied so fast it caused a famine in China, and they even had to buy 250,000 sparrows from the Soviet Union. Well, oops. See you later.